what is your response to some of the criticism that comes your way from guys on the red man group now i'm not sure is it called the red man group or the knitting gossip circle <laughs> of a bunch of dudes bitching about what bitching about me because what i don't give them attention i don't give them the recognition that they want because i shared an idea i mean people say hey roosh the red man group talked about you today and i go and there's a bunch of dudes talking about me gossiping about me that's not a very masculine thing i think uh some of these dudes they got issues they have issues they feel inferior in some way i'm smarter than roosh i should be bigger than roosh is i am the godfather or the originator of this you know i'm like i don't give a shit. okay you are the godfather of this pile of crap go ahead take it you know now i have nothing against you and i would support you in whatever group i do think that having platforms like the red man group is important for men but the individuals who are gossiping about me, men I don't know, I've never met, I've never talked about, is a really feminine bitch ass move. What kind of what kind of criticism do you get from your white viewers, your your white followers on Return of Kings for letting a guy like myself or Athlon write on the site for an extended period of time? I get attacked by just about every group. The white man attacks me because I'm technically not white. <laughs> Roosh is a sand and word. Yeah, right. Roosh just wants to sleep with beautiful Eastern European <laughs> white women. Right, exactly. He's trying to take our women. And then the black people, I mean, I don't get a lot of hate from black people, but some of them say that Roosh pushes the white stuff. I mean, listen, I'm kind of honest in what I see. I believe that uh, there is an agenda to hurt white people and blacks are being used by the democratic party as useful idiots oh, to yeah. attack right so i'm not saying that blacks are bad i don't get into that racial iq crime stuff that a lot of the alt-right does i don't really care about that um but yeah i get attacked from every group because every group is trying to use me to further their own platform their own interests I don't, I get this all the time. Roosh, talk about this. I, can you talk about this? Like they want to use me to push their own I, I, ideas. But listen, I'm going to talk about what interests me and what interests me changes. And, but I think what interests me is interesting. So I talk about it. Yeah. You know, listen, obviously I don't have nearly the same notoriety as you do, but I catch a little bit of that on my end. Hey, Donovan, we wanted, we want, we want to hear, about what you think about Donald Trump or 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 the the people that are running against him or her. I'm not a I'm not a political guy. I don't know really that much about politics at all. But I kind of catch some of that here and there. But a lot of people think that you are alt right, right? So so what so what would you say to people? Oh well Roosh and Return of Kings, that's an alt right website. What would you say to that? I mean I don't get caught up in labels. I am not a label. I am not an ideology. I am a human being with experiences, ideas, and knowledge that's, you know, it's not firm. It's not stable. You know, this phone is stable. It's solid. Like static. But the idea, yeah. But my, I, I can change my mind. I can grow. It's not so much I change my mind, but I grow into things. I don't get, I did a lot of people. Okay. Because in the United States, identity was taken away from us. All these, uh, past traditions was taken away from us we get no pride in where we are from we are lost we have no identity so then this is where we are reaching please give me identity i am migtow i am red pill i'm black lives matter i'm a white nationalist identitarian you know people are just dying give me some identity it's like looking for you don't have a favorite sports team and the first team you see that has colors you like yeah i'm that i'm a fan right i don't get into that you know i don't get into labels like people say oh in the manosphere there is these men in it who believe in this i don't get into that right. you know i'm not a i'm not a word i'm a vibrating ball of energy in this messed up world but I don't need this identity. So I think that's where a lot of the problems come forth. My favorite team is this, and you're on another team, so we have to compete, right?
there are people in the manosphere, Rouge, who think that the tides are starting to change. They believe that feminism is on its way out. Now, I don't, I don't share that sentiment. I think, me personally, I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And I, listen, I'd be willing to bet my life, ironically, that I'll probably be dead and buried by the time people start to realize that feminism was a bad idea. Do you think that you will be around when feminism is finally gone? Do you think it's going to happen in your lifetime? What do you think? Like, what's it going to take to turn the culture around, if at all? If you think about it, feminism boils down to two concepts, allowing women to vote and allowing women to have careers that put that career above family. Right. Those are the two main stems, right? Um, everything else kind of comes from this general empowerment idea, whether abortion, birth control, social justice, all that stuff. But those two main pillars, that's what feminism is. Now, if there's a girl who believes in the right to vote and works in a nine to five job, is she going to self identify as a feminist? Probably not. So what that tells me is that feminism is normalized baked so into the culture that to remove it would require a revolution of some of some type this is why i'm very pessimistic that we can i hate to say roll roll the clock back but that's what you would really need to to uh, do a lot of men what they think of is of the feminist theory is more like the side effects more like the outside branches on the tree instead of the root and the root right. is giving women the right to vote which is allowing them to have a leadership role in their community this is a masculine thing to vote is actually a masculine activity to determine who can lead and the second thing, putting career, putting women into careers that automatically demote a woman's perception of how family should uh, be. Until you remove those two, you're, I mean, what are you going to win? Right. And listen, I've always been of the mind that, listen, women can do whatever it is they want to do. That's fine. Listen, it's a free country. It's a free world. But they can't have it both ways. And I'm of the mind that the more money, the more status, the more power, the more stuff a woman acquires over her lifetime, the further she shrinks her pool of potential suitors. But they never realize this until they're in their mid to late thirties. Wait a minute. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in my thirties. I, I think I'm still reasonably attractive. I have this career. I have all this money. I've traveled to all these destinations. Why aren't high value men busting down my door? And the reason for that is because of what you have amassed. And listen, the rule of hypergamy, we, we both know women are not going to try to consolidate on men who are lesser than they are. I agree with you. It's definitely going to get worse before it gets better because there's no, there's really no stopping the train. I think it's going to take, it's going to, I don't know, like the tides, I guess are, I don't want to say the tides are turning. There seems to be more awareness, but the more awareness that seems to be shown, the more pushback we seem to get. That's why to me, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. And then men also have to ask themselves, what are you going to win mm -hmm. if you get all the wish list, uh, get all the goals on your wish list and you make the culture better? You know how long it takes for cultures to actually change? It takes years and years and years. So what do you gain? You're not going to really gain anything. Your life probably is not going to be improved just because women get a little bit better doesn't mean they're going to start banging down your uh, door anyway. You still have to be an attractive guy. So you have to, this is why I'm not so big into advocating for su societal change. I know what causes change and sure. I have some ideas, but it really comes down to the individual. You're on your own. You are on your own. There's a world of 7 billion people and that is, you're not going to be able to control the direction of that change. You can wish and hope, but that hope is just going to make you upset when you see that the world is going in the opposite way that you want. So game is one of the most powerful individual things that a man can do. But at the same time, you can have the best game in the world. And if the world is going in another way, girls are getting worse or right. bigger attitudes. So then you have to make a choice at some point. If you can't get what you want, then you have to stop it. And you have to try something else. That, see, the problem is internet networks 
which the Manosphere is, is really a surrogate community. You, th you think you're in a community of like you're in your village where you know your neighbors and you meet up every Sunday for drinks, coffee. It, it kind of makes it seem like that. We're in a community of men, but you're not. You're in a network often driven by, again, egos, by financial interests, by competing ideologies, by trolling and things like this. So I I don't know if the answer is more internet stuff, more internet networks. I think it's going offline. So.